And welcome back to the OHIO podcast, everybody. I am Buckeye Boggs. That man over there is the wild man, Chris Wilds. And this is what we were supposed to talk about on Sunday night. We ran out of time, Chris, but it's June. And that means it's recruiting season. Yeah. Are you ready? Let's do it. Let's talk about the 2025 recruits in the in the state of Ohio, Chris. We're going to talk about the top five according to the 247 Sports Composite Ranking. Although these rankings for 2025 guys are a little sketchy, Chris, it's kind of way too early. They're coming off of their junior or so, excuse me, their sophomore, sophomore years, years of high school. Yeah. They're going to be juniors this upcoming season. And so usually the recruiting rankings kind of start to settle in after those junior seasons. And so we don't want to go overboard, but these are the kind of the top five guys that have kind of been circled on everybody's recruiting boards or their whiteboards uh, as the guys in the state of Ohio that kind of all the big dogs want. So those are the guys we are going to talk about tonight. Are you ready? Let's talk. All right, let's start off with the guy who's no doubt has the best name of all, Bo Jackson. Jackson yes. <laughs> Bo knows football, right, in the state of Ohio. This, this Bo does. This Bo does. He's 6'1", 190 pounds, plays for St. Joseph High School in the Cleveland, Ohio area. Uh, he's labeled as an athlete, Chris, because he plays on both sides of the football, running back on offense, safety on defense, Ohio State, Penn State, Notre Dame, Michigan, the four big dogs, in the Big Ten, or at least the three in the Big Ten, and maybe one in the future, but at least the big independent uh, here in the Midwest are all on this guy's radar right now. He's been offered by all four schools. Uh, we'll see if some of the Southern schools try to sneak their way in to get Bo Jackson. I would think Auburn, Auburn. would have to, <laughs> right? They would yeah. have to. Yeah. Uh, there's no relation to the Bo Jackson from Auburn, uh, the the Kansas City Royal, and and at the time I believe it was the L.A. Raiders. Was it L.A.? Uh, was it L.A. or Oakland? It was L.A. L.A. Raiders at that time. Uh, Bo Jackson. Pretty I don't sure know. they've moved so many times. <laughs> right. If I'm wrong, let me know in the comments below. But um, what do you think of Bo Jackson, Chris? I'll tell you, I love the kid's game, Eric. Good north-south runner. Real nice initial burst. Hits the holes hard. Uh, you know, his feet never stop moving. He has the strength to break tackles. Does not shy away from contact. Has a nice stiff arm. I'll tell you, my favorite play, I watched one of his highlight reels, Eric, and the kid literally carried four defenders on his back for four or five yards. Uh, you know, that's the kind of toughness that we need in our running game. Uh, you, you know, we see that, you know, we talk about how Mayan Williams runs angry. I could see this kid having that same kind of, you know, power running game. Mm -hmm. um, I really like what he brings and, and you know, great size at, at 6'1", 190. You imagine over the next couple of years, he's probably going to be in that 200, 250, 215 range. I, I think he is a super big pickup. And obviously, as important as Ohio State getting that guy as a running back, just as much as is it important to keep Penn State and Michigan and Notre Dame from getting him as a running back. So um, for his size, he runs really well behind his pads. Yes. Runs like kind of a kind of a a smaller, bigger back than what his, you know, than what his size is. And so when I say smaller, I mean he's he kind of has that um um ability to not shift i won't call it shiftiness but i'll call it more of a scat back look to him yeah. when he runs because he does have that explosion to him but he will get behind his pads and run you over he's not shy of contact which i like mm -hmm. uh we'll see how he develops in the next two years um, I do know that they've got their eye on him over there at Columbus at the Woody Hayes Athletic Center. This is that time of year where he goes into a camp. He really excels at that camp, gets that offer. We'll see if he commits early if he's or if he's kind of leaning towards wanting to mo be more of a national recruit. But I like him. Love the name, by the way. Yeah. That alone gives me uh, excitement to have him on the roster 
We'll see if he wants to be a Buckeye or not. Uh, no inclination as to where he's going to go. By the way, all these guys we're going to talk about way too early for that. Um, but, yeah, I, I, this is my running back of choice from the state of Ohio in the 2025 class. Moving on, let's talk about the top offensive lineman from Ohio in 2025, yeah. Carter Lowe. Good size, 6'5", 290 from Whitmer High School in Toledo, Ohio. Uh, right now, the big three as far as offers for him, the team up north, of course, who offered him pretty early, Ohio State and the Georgia Bulldogs want him as well. Those are the big three I'm finding on him. This guy, to me, Chris, if you put him side by side to Donovan Jackson, they could be like brothers as far as their yeah. look. That he has a very much of a Donovan Jackson look. Now, I'll be honest, did not find tape on this guy. Uh, just looked at pictures, couldn't find any any highlight tapes yet. So I don't want to over exaggerate here. I'm not really sure what we got. I know he's the top, the, the highest ranked offensive lineman in the state right now for the 2025 class. That's usually a pretty good sign that he's played since a freshman on the starting line in Division One football. So that's pretty good. We'll see how he develops in, in the next year or so. But when you're the top offensive lineman from the state of Ohio, Ohio State wants you. Georgia wants you. Ooh, that's going to be an interesting one there. Does he want to stay yeah. home? Does he want to go to the south? Play for the hot, hot, uh, the hot team right now. But, you know, you also have to remember he's a Toledo kid. That definitely puts that team up north in play too. It really does. Uh, you know, so the I have seen a little bit. Of, the the town's 50-50 split. It's about 50 yeah. Ohio State, 50 Michigan. Toledo is technically a little closer to Ann Arbor than it is Columbus. but It is. Well, I'll tell you, I, I did find some video on the kid. Uh, just, oh, did just you? Clips. Yeah, just clips. Uh, he, he plays pretty physical, Eric. Uh, you know, he is a kid that if you see him right now, like you said, standing next to Do uh, Don like a Donovan Jackson. Now, I saw him actually a picture of him with, Luke Montgomery. Okay. And these guys are pretty similar in size. Mm. Uh, you know, this kid looks like physically he could get out there and play right now. He's not quite as developed as far as physically goes, as far as the muscle mass. Uh, I think he needs to add that a little bit, maybe, you know, or, or at least tone up and strengthen up a little bit. But the good news is this kid has two years to bulk up with that muscle mass and improve his game. He is, like I say, a physical player, uh, but from what I saw, could probably work a little bit more on his footwork. Um, but overall, I thought he's a great talent. And Eric, this kid does have two visits scheduled in Columbus this month. That gives me a lot of hope. So, yeah, uh, yeah I, I see. And, and again, as important as keeping or as getting him to stay home, it's just as important to keep him out of Michigan to keep him away from Georgia, who you have to figure is going to be a stumbling block for us, you know, or could be a stumbling block for us over the next few years because I, I don't want to be the one to say it, but maybe the dynasty's coming to an end. Maybe the game's starting to move past that team uh, down there in uh, Alabama just a little bit. A little bit. It seems that way. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I the one thing I don't want us to do is see Jimmy come down here and poach the top offensive lineman from the state. He's gotten several uh, recruits in yes. the 2024 class, the big one being the running back, uh, Jordan uh, Marshall, I believe it was, yeah. if I'm not mistaken, was his name. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we don't want him to get a foothold on the guys we want. So yeah. we gotta we gotta sure that up in this recruiting cycle here. Moving on, we have three more. Let's talk about one of my favorite defensive end slash linebacker Justin Hill. Uh, they've got him penciled in as a defensive end. I saw him play some linebacker in his highlight film. 6'4", 215 from Winton Woods High School in Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, he's got Ohio State and Notre Dame as the two big dogs that uh, early on on him that he seems to be fighting for. Of course, Cincinnati's got a rich tradition of coming down into the Queen City and getting mm -hmm. some pretty good high school kids there, especially from the Catholic schools down there in Cincinnati. You add, you add 
Illyard to his name, Justin Hill, Illyard, he reminded me of Justin Hilliard, man. A little yeah. bit bigger than Justin Hilliard was in high school. He is only is only going to be a junior, so he's got some time to even add more to that frame, which is why I think people are going to think that he's going to be a player to put on the end and put his hand in the ground. He's explosive, um, great tackler, uh, moves through uh, trash or traffic really well for a defender, um, can even cover well, which is why I'm like defensive end, man. But, but given – Given what we know in today's game where linebackers have to cover and be a little bit quicker, and given his size, I can understand why someone's probably going to put him as a defensive end in college. That's where he maybe he's projected to go. But I I, I don't know, man. His athleticism screams just a stud linebacker, possibly. And given Did the conference. Jack? Ooh, I didn't even think about that. I didn't even think about that. That's a possibility. I want this guy. Yeah. I, I I want him. I to me, Justin Hilliard. You know my love affair with Justin Hilliard. I oh, love yeah. the guy. What he what he was able to fight through. It really stinks that that man never got. I thought a fair shake given all the injuries he had. Uh, was was a was a stud recruit in Ohio when he was in high school. I see Justin Hill as the same thing. He's a stud recruit, just like Justin Hilliard was. I I, I want this guy. Oh, yeah, me too. I mean, uh, good speed, good size, does need to bulk up a little, like you said. If, if we're going to have him at the linebacker or at that jack, maybe get him up to, what, two, 225 to 240. Yeah, he's going to have to be probably at least 260, 265 to get on that end. So uh, that, that's a lot to ask. But, uh, you know, I, I think he's a tremendous talent, and I would really love to see him in scarlet and gray come 2025. I definitely don't want to see him going to Notre Dame. Let me just put that out there right now. I don't want him anywhere near Notre Dame. Uh, you, you know, I, I used to kind of have some divided loyalties at one point where, you know, I was always an Ohio State guy, but I kind of like Notre Dame when they weren't playing us. But my, my boy Marcus Freeman, man, he's turned that completely around. I have, <laughs> I have no desire right now to see anybody good at Notre Dame. We're going to have to send yeah. – uh, Send Laurinaitis down there to get this kid for us. There you go, and that's big. If I think this is going to be a big recruiting chip for for James if he can win this yeah. one, because um, yeah, but you know we'll see we'll see what happens here with this with this one in the coming in the over the summer. All right, dude, this one I'm really excited about. Yeah, tight end Luca Gilbert, six seven. 233 pounds from Lakota West High School, which is an Ohio State pipeline, man. Yes. Westchester, Ohio, down there in the Dayton, Cincinnati area. Um, Ohio State, Michigan, man. That's what this one's going to come down to. It's going to be team up north versus Ohio State. We've got to win this one. He's the best tight end to come out of the state of Ohio. I've been sitting here trying to rack my brain around this. Because some of our best ones haven't been from Ohio. Um, man, I don't know. It's gonna have to think, wait and see what Cade does this year. <laughs> that's true. That's true. That's true. But he's not like Cade no. at all. No, no he's he is much more of a, a Jeremy Ruckert type type. Yes. Yeah. Cade, Cade is a combine. Okay. That's he's the combine man. Or the the farm gronk or whatever they want to call him, country gronk. Uh, this kid is a mismatch nightmare for people. Yeah. yeah, I'm thinking kind of more on the lines of like a Ricky Dudley, like yeah. incredibly athletic. But here's the thing, I love the first two minutes of his highlight film. It's just him putting putting linebackers and defensive ends on their butts. He is physical man he and so he, he's 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 not quite as um he's not quite as super athletic as Rucker was Rucker was extremely athletic Rucker lacked the physicality when he got yeah. here this is a little bit opposite this is a extremely physical young man who's got really good but raw athleticism yeah um I'm looking at him and thinking there's the potential 
with this kid's just God-given raw ability, he could end up being like a really tall receiver. But he just happens to be 6'7". It's probably going to be around 250 pounds by yeah. the time he gets to Ohio State. And that's just a monster of a human being. You got to yeah. get this kid, man. We cannot lose this kid to, to Jimmy. No, no. I, I love his game as well, Eric. You know, you talked about it, the physical blocking uh, on the line. But then, you know, he also plays long. He's got those long arms. Uh, you know, he's going to be a mismatch nightmare in the red zone. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, he is. Which was Dud- was Ricky Dudley's. Yes. You know, he has, that was his he has red good butter. hands. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe not the greatest, but he has good hands. I thought he had a good catch radius. I saw him turn around and make some catches where the ball was badly thrown behind him. Uh, so so he can move the hips and get the get himself turned around. Uh, yeah, I, I'm with you. We have to get this kid. He is – I'm with you. I cannot rack my brain and find a tight end prospect as good as that. I can't think of one from Ohio. I really can't. That is I mean, that I've, of a tight end pro- I've sat pro- I've pro- sat here all day and thought, when was the last time we had a tight end this good? And you're come right from he's the gonna state. Be six, seven. He's got to be two fifty. He might end up being six eight by the time it's six nine by the well, time yeah, this thing is I, done. Because what was he was about? He's grown two inches, I think, over the last year. Yeah, he was. He was six five as a freshman, six seven as a as a sophomore. More likely, he he's probably going to be done, but another inch, six eight. <laughs> Good the thing, lord! The thing is, he's getting to be the height—the height where you could throw about 50, 60 pounds on him and put him in offensive tackle. Yeah, which I mean, honestly, I mean, look, Reed Fry. Given his, it. given his physicality, that might be a possibility. It really yeah. might. When it's all said and done, that might be what happens. Zim Mikowski was a tight end in high yeah, school, well, and then he, like he, said, he kept getting Reed, bigger. Reed Fraggles, perfect example. He was a tight end for Ohio State. Played a little bit of tackle there as we moved on. Had a decent little career in the NFL yeah. as an offensive tackle. Yeah. So I mean, because they're going to have the feet. They're yeah. going to have the feet given the footwork that they do at the tight end position. Yeah, makes sense. Got to get this kid, man. This was this is my circle circle. He's 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 my must get here from the state of Ohio. Last guy. Let's talk about Dor- Dorian Drew, cornerback, 6'2", 185 pounds as a sophomore. From Northmont High School in Clayton, Ohio, which is the Dayton area. Again, team up north, Ohio State, Notre Dame. Those are the big three right now who've offered for this young man. He is going to be the top kid in the state. Um, another great corner. He's Marshawn Lattimore 2.0. Yeah. Great on offense. Tremendous on defense. He he He's a little raw, but he was a 15-year-old. 16, 15, 16 year old and dominating 17, 18 year old guys in high school, man. This kid is going to be a stud with a capital S. Yeah, I'll tell you, good size already. Uh, you know, blazing fat. 11, 1, 5 in the 100 meter, 4, 4 in the 40. Uh, you know, as a 15 year old kid, he's just, he's got that fast speed, the good size. Uh, you know what scares me is he does have two crystal ball predictions in already for Notre Dame. Mm-hmm. However, those were made by Notre Dame insiders. Is it all <laughs> smoke and mirrors? Not only that, but we've seen firsthand how quickly the tides can turn when it comes to flipping a recruit. Yeah, so, so I, I think there's 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 a little bit of the whole, again, Cincinnati, Dayton, Catholic thing going on here. Um the, you know, Notre Dame was hot for a year in recruiting uh, with the changeover of the coach. But Freeman's they, first year wasn't lost hot. James and, yeah. yeah <laughs> and, and if Ohio State goes in to South Bend and hands them a pretty solid L, I can't imagine he's going to want to go there unless that gives him more motivation, think he's going to be able to start. But let's see how this goes. Let's, you know, let's watch how this goes. If I'm recruiting this kid for Ohio State, I'm asking Sonny Styles to ride down, or not Sonny, uh, Lorenzo Styles to ride down there with me. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Or just take them both. Just take them both. Yeah, take them both. Put up, put both boys and the dad while we're at it. Let's just make it a family affair. Um, so now we're just now we're just going to intimidate the kid, you know. 
<laughs> right, right, right. So there are two quarterbacks from the state of Ohio that are both really good. Not to mention, there's actually a third one who's got a pretty um, famous daddy, but he's not been offered by Ohio State, so we won't even talk about uh, oh, um, his uh, John Kitna's boy, uh, yeah. John Kitna's son. Uh, but um, the those two plus the quarterback from Michigan who we've already offered. We've offered three quarterbacks. I'm not going to get into them in this video. We'll have a separate video about those three guys because I want to break them down a little bit more. But the rumor was as of today that the offer went out to all three with the message, first one who wants to take it, you're our guy. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. We'll see which one. And one of them has on a it. brother that's uh, already on the team as well. There you go. Yep. So we'll, we'll break that down in another video. Please like, share, subscribe, do all those good things. Thank you so much for everybody who's taking the time to watch us all the way to the end. We appreciate that. Go Bucks.